This engineering graphics video is about orthographic projections, that's front, top, and right side views. And specifically, you will learn how to draw the third view if you're only given two of them. So if you're given a front and right side view, I'll show you how to use the miter line to draw the top side view. I'll start off by showing you a completed example problem where I can illustrate how vertical and horizontal faces are shown and how those are different from an angled face and then also from a hole. Then after that, I'll work through three example problems from scratch and make three complete drawings so you can see the, the full process beginning to end. I'm Dr. Bernard, engineering professor. The skill you're going to learn in this video is going to be applicable towards proofreading your own drawings. You're not normally going to have to draw a top view given front and right side. Normally you would be provided all three projection views, but you need to check them for mistakes. And so being able to create a complete view from scratch will show that you understand how all three views will relate to each other. And that will help you actually find individual lines that are missing when you actually go to make your own complete set of drawings later on. So we'll start off with this picture of a birdhouse. And I wanna first talk about vertical and horizontal surfaces, angled surfaces, and holes. A vertical or horizontal surface on one view will be an edge on another view meaning that it'll be a two-dimensional shape on one view, but just a line on the other two. And one example on this birdhouse is this front square area. So this front square, that right side that I just colored in blue there, matches up to this line on the right side view. And you can figure out where this will go on the top view using the miter line. So this 45 degree angle line is the miter line. And in order to line things up between the right view and the top view, you would just trace a line upwards and then left in order to see that this dashed line is what corresponds to that front square face. So that front square face of the birdhouse corresponded to an edge on the right view and to an edge on the top view. And by tracing those lines back down from the top view, we can see that the top view left and right border denote the left and right edge of the line on the front view. Now, angled surfaces are gonna be different. If we look at the roof of the house, you can see from the front view that it's just an edge, it's a single line. But from these arrows, you can see that you would actually see a surface when looking from the right or from the top. And those blue shaded areas represent that same angled surface. When you have an angled line on one view, an angled edge, that's gonna be a face on both other views. And both views will have the same shape, although they may be distorted a little bit because of the angle. And with these blue arrows, I just you're using the miter line, you can see that the top and bottom or front and back surfaces do line up using the miter line. And the third feature we'll discuss is going to be the hole. So a hole, whether it is round or rectangular, is going to be a face. It's going to be a two-dimensional shape from all three views. So a circular hole is like a cylinder. It will look like a circle on one side and a rectangle from the other two, right? Those two blue rectangles represent this circular hole from the other two points of view. If the front view were a square instead of a circle, the top and right side would still look the same. They would still look rectangular. And again, using the miter line, you can see that the depth of the hole, which in this case does not go all the way through the back, is gonna be the same on both the right view and the top view. So using these three techniques should get us through the next couple of example problems. And that's first, that a vertical or horizontal surface will be a surface on one view and an edge on the other two. An angled surface will be an edge on one view and a face on the other two. And then a hole will be a face on all three views. So before I can draw the top view, the first thing I'm gonna do is set up the miter line. And for this drawing, since this vertical distance does not match the horizontal distance, the miter line is not going to be a single 45 degree line starting from this corner. As you can already tell by looking at the drawings, right, that's not gonna match up. Since I'm already given a bounding box, I can find where the miter line is gonna start and stop by matching up edges on the top and right side views. So this purple line is gonna be the line that I'm gonna reflect over to make sure all the dimensions line up between the right view and the top view. So if there were some angled surfaces in this drawing, I would probably start with those first, but since there's not, we're gonna move on and just do the horizontal and vertical surfaces. So we'll start off by looking at the front view and we can see there's this large surface in the middle that goes all the way from the top of the drawing to the bottom of the drawing. So looking over on the right-hand view, we're looking for an edge that goes all the way from top to bottom and we can see that it's gonna be right at the very front of the drawing. And so that big surface is gonna to correspond to an edge on the bottom of the top view. So remember a vertical surface will 
will be a face on one view and an edge on the other two. So now looking at this surface, I'm gonna look over to the right hand view for a vertical line that is this height and this location. And this time I'm gonna find this dashed hidden line that's gonna represent that face. And so I can place that red line on the top view that's gonna represent that face. This width on the front is what gave me the length of the face on the top view. And then the depth on the right hand view as to where that dashed line is located showed me how far up on the top view it would need to be placed. So now I'll look at faces on the right hand view. So we've got one lower box there on the right hand view using those solid lines and those correspond to this face here over on the front view. So I can use that then to line up to the top and see that there's gonna be a line all along the right hand side again because on the right view it goes the complete depth. I can do this similarly for this red face that I'm drawing now. Looking over to the front view I can see that that corresponds to this edge here and again since it goes the entire width of the right view and is located at that point on front I can see that there's going to be a vertical line on the top view at that location again a vertical face on the right view is going to be just an edge on the front and top views and they'll be aligned with each other. So we've now looked at all of the visible faces on front and right. Now we're trying to look for edges because a horizontal face on the top view is going to appear as an edge on the front and right. So you need to look for a horizontal line on the front view that corresponds to a horizontal line on the right view. And that will clue us in to a face that's visible from the top. And here we have the dashed line on the right view along with the solid line on the front view. Those are gonna represent the boundaries of a face. So using the left right boundaries of that horizontal line on front view and horizontal line on right view, we can use that to draw a rectangle on the top view that represents a face that will be visible from the top. We can do a similar thing with this horizontal line along with that horizontal line on the right view to show that this right box actually is a complete rectangle and that there should be a line at the very right top of the drawing. And then lastly, using the very top edges that I've colored in purple, we can see that the top of the drawing on the top view actually does connect in. So looking from the top down, you would see a complete outer rectangle representing this shape. And the last part of the drawing that we haven't dealt with yet is the rectangular hole down at the bottom. So we said before that a rectangular hole is gonna be a rectangle on all three views. And using the boundaries of those rectangles on the front and right view, along with the miter line for the right view, you can actually get the dimensions that this rectangle is gonna be on the top view. In this case, I only have to draw two hidden lines here and not all four because visible lines have priority over hidden lines. So where there's already a visible line, you don't draw an additional hidden line. The hidden line gets hidden behind the visible line. And you can determine that these would need to be hidden lines, not visible lines, because the hole's down on the bottom. It would be hidden by the material up above it. All right, so this drawing looks far more intimidating than the last one, but a lot of that is just because on the right-hand side, there's a lot of lines close together. It's not quite as complex as it looks, at least the top-hand view. First step, draw the miter line. After that, I'm gonna look first at an angled surface because I think that's the easiest one to draw because it looks like an edge from one side, but a surface from the other two. So since from the front view, we've got these angled surfaces from the roof, we can see that those correspond to this U-shaped surface on the right. It's gonna be that same U-shape on the top view just distorted a little bit because of the dimensions. So by lining up vertically with the front view and then using the miter line to line up with the right view, you get that same U shape that is seen on the right on the top. That's what makes angled surfaces so useful when drawing orthographic projections is that you see the face from multiple perspectives. I added blue as the mirror image because the right hand view doesn't show any hidden lines or anything through it uh, behind the roof. So you can assume there's gonna be the same thing on the back side as on the front. Now there's one more angled line on this and that's on the right hand view, which you can see corresponds to this rectangle on the front view. There's basically a ramp on the right side of this house. So using the width on the front view and then the width on the right view, which becomes the height on the top view, you can see the location is where that angled ramp surface falls from the top view. So the top view is still pretty empty in the middle. So right now I'm looking at this horizontal line here and tracing across that's gonna correspond to this dashed line at the bottom. So since it's an edge visible on front and right, that means it's a flat horizontal surface visible from the top. And again, using the width on the front view and using the miter line, I can see that that's just gonna be a big rectangular space in the middle of the drawing of the top view. And then lastly, looking at these solid lines that I've highlighted in blue, you can see that those must correspond then to a rectangular area to finish off that top upper right view. 
And then now all that's remaining is the circular hole. It's gonna appear as a circle from one view and a rectangle from the other two. Looking at the right hand view, you can see that the dash lines go all the way through the drawing from front to back. So in the top view, that means that the dash lines representing the left and rightmost edges of the hole are gonna go all the way across from top to bottom. Now, since it looks like the center line is directly beneath the peak of the roof, I'm not gonna draw a center line there because it would be beneath that visible line. And even though there's a cutout there in the, in the center of the roof where the peak is missing, it would still add more confusion than clarity to add a small mini center line there in the middle. So again, just not gonna draw that center line at all. So a complicated drawing like this, start with the angled lines first, since you can use the surface visible on the other one to see what that surface should look like on your missing view. Then try and find your horizontal and vertical surfaces and go back at the end and do your holes last. So this time given top and front, I'm asked to draw a right side view. And again, I start off by drawing the miter line and then next I'm gonna look at angled surfaces since those already give me a shape and then I'll draw the shape on the right side view. I'm gonna start with this blue surface so you can see on the front view corresponds then to that red shaded surface on the top. So it's kind of a weird shape, but as long as you use all four of those lines and the miter line to reflect them down, you can extend and draw that same shape on the front view where you can note that the higher point, which is then further left on the top view, is wider than the narrow point that is further to the right. I'm gonna repeat this process one more time for the underside of that overhang, which corresponds to that large blue shaded area. To identify the boundary for that region, I just traced upwards from that corner to find that it corresponded to that dashed line on the top view. So then when drawing in this shape on the right-hand view, you can see it does not quite go the entire width of the shape because on the top view, this section is is not quite the entire height. Now we've got two angled lines on the top view that we can use, and this purple line corresponds then to this large shaded purple region. And by extending arrows for all of these key features, we can see that this purple shape fills in that gap there on the left. And I doubled up this purple line on the right-hand view there for a second just to show that this pointed region, right, is still here, that's this pointed region on the front-hand view. So this large purple shape on the front view is the same shape on the right, it's just really squished together, but it still has all of the same features, including even this flat section on the bottom corresponds to the flat section on the bottom right there. And because there's a mirror image purple line there on the top of the drawing, I added a mirror image also on the right hand side. Looking down at the lower half of the drawing, I see that there's a vertical line here, which matches up exactly with this vertical dashed line there. And an edge on two views would have to represent a face on the third view. So for the right hand view, I get the height that matches the height on the front view. And I get the width by matching the height from the top view reflected over the miter line. And since the dashed line goes all the way from top to bottom, on the right view, it goes all the way from left to right. And now just to check to see if there was anything we might've missed, I'm looking further to the left at this big kind of shaded region over here that we haven't dealt with yet. That's gonna to correspond to this line on the top view that has that same width, which means it's also going to be an edge on the right hand view. That is a face on one view that's vertical, would be an edge on the other two. And since that's a height that goes basically the entire from bottom to top, it actually just corresponds to this left edge. I'm um, right here, which we've already drawn from part of the other surfaces. So since there's no other features that we haven't used yet, and essentially everything is visible now in all three drawings, the drawing is complete. If this video has helped you understand engineering graphics a little better, please consider subscribing to my channel so you can see each new video as they come out. Or if you don't want to wait for a new one, you just want to watch another video right now, YouTube's going to recommend a couple that'll be on the screen right now. Take your pick. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.